Okay. Okay. Everybody ready? Friends and family. <laughs> we are gathered together today to be a part of the marriage ceremony of Laura and Rich, to be legal witnesses, but even more, to personally assure them of our happiness for them and our support of them as they make this important decision. They have made a personal commitment to each other and have come here today to make that decision public and official. In order to keep this ceremony as dignified as this group can manage, I ask each of you to make sure your cell phone is turned off. Okay. Yours? I, so. <laughs> I don't even know where mine is. <laughs> All right. Before we proceed to an expression of vows, Laura and Rich would like to exchange letters that they have written for one another and read them in your presence. Friday, August 19th, 2011. That's today, right? <laughs> Coach, which is Laura's affectionate name for me. Anyone that's been tracking with our story over the past 20 months has a vivid collection of metaphors to draw from. I think my first major Rich and Laura image had something to do with a pitcher-catcher relationship, looking each other in the eye and saying, keep your head in the game. <laughs> then there was the high dive analogy, not to mention the slow moving iceberg and wildly bouncing ping pong ball. Bear with me, love, I have a couple more. And the header is, you are my heartbeat. Two years ago, just before we started seeing each other, I told a trusted group of friends that I felt as if I had lost eye contact with God. It was a dark place. My brother told me about a song he wrote. I'm not sure what the exact line was, but basically encouraged me to look for God's heartbeat, because even if you lose eye contact in the dark, you can hear and feel a heartbeat. That image has been significant to me ever since. I know that you see me as a decisive and clear-minded woman who knows what she wants, but I lost trust in myself and God in me for a long time. I stand here with you today and feel God's heartbeat in our love. The second heading is, you are my mirror. When I lived in East Africa, the only mirror I had access to for six months was a small paint speckled square that hung in a dim bathroom. I could see only my face and barely that much. At first, this annoyed me. Then, it was freedom. There were days when I had no idea what I looked like, but I saw my reflection in the laughter of children, the eyes of colleagues, the warmth of my neighbors. I felt creative, cu curious, alive, and free in new ways. I wasn't weighed down by the usual self-consciousness and fear. Now, there are too many mirrors to avoid in my, life, in my everyday life. Some are dim, distorted, or broken. Those images sometimes weigh on me, but your nearness, your encouragement, the acceptance and love in your eyes remind me of my true self. In you, I better see the depth of my heart and the possibility of my reach. You are my heartbeat, my mirror, and my partner. Who knew an iceberg and a ping pong ball could get their heads in the game and leap off a high dive? <laughs> to get to, together, we can do anything. Signed, Laura Gopal. Oh, nice. Thank you. Rich, you have chosen Laura to be your wife. Will you love and respect her? I have a letter too. Oh no, that's... Oh, okay. that's later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following your script. <laughs> Coach. Okay. Would you like to read your letter ahead? Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you these questions, all of them. Wait till it's time. You have chosen Laura to be your wife. Will you love and respect her? Will you be honest with her always? Will you stand by her through whatever may come? I will. All right, it's time for you to give Laura her letter. For her to read. I actually gave Laura two options. <laughs> ah. One that's labeled simple, and there's just three words, and one that's labeled less simple with 333 words. <laughs> Our limit was 300. <laughs> I know what the three word one said. <laughs> no. Actually, I'm going to take this one though. You can read them both, you know. I could, that's true. I'm in charge today. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> this is entitled A Thing or Two. Dear Laura Goebel, back in the roaring 20s, around when I was born, <laughs> Dorothy Parker wrote in The New Yorker. 
a good thing for them to cut on my tombstone would be wherever she went, including here, it was against her better judgment. <laughs> As I mulled reflections about our relationship to share with you on this momentous day, two themes dominate. Number one, you've been warned. <laughs> Nearing now two years, you've heard a steady stream of reasons why we are not a good pair. And much of that has come from the person who knows me best, me. Now, I am not one to want to be exposed in public. <laughs> After. <laughs> well, what I mean is my life has been fairly transparent. I'm not known for eating healthy, being wealthy, or wise. Reputations are earned over years. Mine is hard earned. I am, however, known for being persuasive. One last time, I'll repeat the single best warning that could cause you in a few minutes to say, no, I don't. I am heartless. Not brokenhearted or half-hearted, heartless. This is not a secret, it isn't fair, and I don't think I did anything to deserve it. But it happened, and despite the best efforts of friends, family, and therapists, for nearly a decade, it continues. My condition may very well be terminal. You have heard all this before countless times, so there is no doubt that you've been warned. Yet, against your better judgment, you have offered to share your heart. You've asked me to hold it, treasure it, and nurture it through joy, hurt, and growth. Yes, it defies common sense and logic for you to love me. But you know your heart. You know where it belongs, and your heart chose me. Which brings us to this day and reflection theme. Number two, I now choose you. I love you. This condition is terminal. <laughs> Until my death, my death, do we part. Most sincerely, Richard A. Recker. Do you wish to read the second letter now or save that for another day? I'm gonna save that one. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna ask you. Laura, you have chosen Rich to be your husband. Will you love and respect him? Will you be honest with him always? Will you stand by him through whatever may come? Yes, I will. For everyone else at a December celebration, the couple will exchange rings embedded with sea glass, a meaningful image for them. Today, they will declare their public vows. Richard Recker, do you choose Laura Goebel to be your constant friend confidant, companion, and lawful wife. I do. Here, in the presence of family and friends, do you offer your solemn vow to be her faithful partner? I have some more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I respond after each no, one? No, I or? think we'll wait till okay. the end. <laughs> Do you promise to love her unconditionally, to support her dreams and aspirations, to honor and respect her, to find the humor in life with her and be there for her in times of sorrow, to continue to work toward becoming the man she deserves and the man that she believes you to be. I do. Laura Goebel, do you choose Richard Recker to be your constant friend, confidant, companion, and lawful husband? Here in the presence of family and friends, do you offer your solemn vow to be his faithful partner? Do you promise to love him unconditionally, to support his dreams and aspirations, to honor and respect him, to find the humor in life with him, and be there for him in times of sorrow, to continue to work toward becoming the woman he deserves and the woman that he believes you to be? Without a doubt, I do. Typically, all persons present are asked if anyone has any reason why these two should not be wed and are given the opportunity to share this information. However, in the interest of time, <laughs> Laura and Rich have suggested that we simply ask our witnesses, family, and all gathered to pledge their support of this union by saying, we do. So, everybody, we, we do. do. We all wish you happiness, but our wishes alone cannot give it. Happiness can only come from yourselves, from the spirit that is within you. Though you cannot choose what changes and chances are to befall you in the coming years, you can choose the spirit in which you will meet them. 
So if you will take these vows as a bond of honor, which you will keep with unswerving loyalty, then whatever may come, you will have that inward happiness which no sorrows can take away. Today, your separate lives with their own memories, hopes, temptations, and trials are merged into one. Inasmuch as Rich and Laura have consented together to become husband and wife and have exchanged promises and declared their intents in front of those gathered, then by the authority vested in me as a judge of the Circuit Court of the State of Oregon, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss each other. <laughs> You're giving us an out? In the last, oh, 60 seconds or yes. so. Okay, too late. I'm going to sign. <laughs> All right. All right, this is now very official. Um, Egg's still wet. All right. And, Somebody pop a cork. <laughs> uh, okay, perfect. Well, it's official! Woo! Woo! Hey! Got it. Got it. Right I'm gonna give you a full glass because you're now married <laughs> to the guy, you gotta start living on alcohol. You look so handsome, Rod Hushka. Hey, that I white, just, sharp shirt. <laughs> it's it's t shirts or button downs. That's your choice with me. Beautiful. There's sure your that will last me. Okay. <laughs> okay, I gotta drink to my baby. Mm. Should we toast We're gonna our look in the friends? camera. This is to Louise Gobel. Biella. Yellow. Can you edit that out? No, I'm this just is kidding. to <laughs> Louise Yeller. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Outtakes. Okay, ready? This is to Biella Bear. This is to <laughs> Louise Biella. Okay. Look, I got my coffee. How's the juice? Oh my god, I'm really nervous. Oh my god, I'm really nervous. Wow. Do you want to say that anything? That tastes orangey. Do you want to say anything? It tastes orangey to you. Hello. Congratulations. Hello. Cheers. <laughs> Congratulations. It doesn't get much better than having champagne on the bluff. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, this wedding was awesome. I, I, I'm not. Laura, this wedding was awesome, and I screwed it up again. Congratulations, Laura. Oh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I might as well not say anything now. Congratulations, Laura. Way to keep it short and sweet. Long weddings are the worst. This was really awesome. 
Thanks for having us. Something Congratulations. Yeah, Welcome to the family. <laughs> Hi, Louise. And other family. <laughs> Laura wears a pants in this family, and she'll be issuing a toast. <laughs> 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 pressure. Open your other leg. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for people well, being flexible and showing up at 4.30 on a Friday with less than a week's notice in most case. So um, I think the people here really reflect um, people that have been a part of the journey along the way in many ways. And um, I think Rich and I are really, really grateful for your support and your love and your presence, your creativity, and that you're all drinkers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> One of our favorite words is community, and, and this is uh, definitely uh, one of our communities, and thank you for sharing the day with us. So, here's the community! Cheers. Thank you! Cheers! Clicking is good. It's more fun that way. <laughs>